no, all I right welcome back everybody so if you're if you're if you're following along at home, here's the warm-up for today. Just decide what scenario goes with which graph. Okay, now, Henry just said scenario one matches graph A because you can't have middle values. You can't have decimal values, which means that scenario one is more of a discrete scenario, right? Mm -hmm. Discrete meaning single solitary values, not all numbers in between, just certain pieces in between. So that must mean that graph two, graph B and two go together. That must mean scenario two is more continuous. The graph represents distance away from destination as a function of miles bike. You begin 60 miles away and bike for six hours. Good. Yeah, that is, that is, um, that, that should be um, continuous, right? If I take any given amount of time, that's going to give you any miles away at any given moment. Good. So that's really what we talked about yesterday. That was a new thing from yesterday, talking about whether it's going to be discrete or continuous. Uh, so let's get to it. Uh, good. Get out your guided notes. What you're looking for is the packet that I gave you yesterday, this stapled piece of paper that you had yesterday. You did the front, and now we're going to do the next two pages. Okay? So please go ahead and get that out. All right. So again, yesterday we had the problem of, what was it? What was that front? It was the tickets, tickets to the museum problem, right? And that was more discrete because I can only have certain values of tickets. I can only have whole number values of tickets. Then we talked about how do we graph it? How do we make the function on and put the function on the graph? We talked about scale. We talked about labeling our graph. And that was going to be really important. And that's what we're going to look at again today. So we've got an anteater consuming 35,000 insects per day. That seems crazy. That's a lot of ants that that anteater is eating. Now, I am going to kind of shift the wording a little bit because you could make an argument. Well, I'll talk about it a little bit. But I'm going to say an anteater consumes at a rate of 35,000 insects per day. And, and it's important that we shift our thinking to that a little bit because well, I'll, uh, again, I'll talk about it. First thing here. Why is this a function? Because there's one input and one output. Good. Because there's one input and one output. Now, to think about that, let's let's just des describe what our inputs and outputs are. Let's describe what our independent and dependent var variables are. What is the independent variable in this case, then? If we say that there's only one input and one output, what is the input? The number of days. Number of days? Yeah. Amount of days. So in other words, the time value, right? What's our dependent variable then? If I put in different time amounts, what's that going to tell me? What's that going to be the output value for? What am I going to get out of the equation in the end? Good, the amount of insects, right? Sorry. You don't have to say that. Amount of insects. It's an ant eater, I was assuming the ant. So. so is this a function? We say yes, because at every moment in time, I'm gonna only have one output. I'm only gonna have one value that I've eaten. That this thing is eaten, right? I don't know. Anybody ever eat insects before? Have you really? Yeah. Like, what'd you eat? <laughs> what'd you eat? I ate that? What's the one? A cricket? Yeah, I've heard that's like a big one. Yeah, it's like chocolate covered. Yeah, like mine were chocolate covered. No, I can't do it. I can't do that. Oh my god, I've Okay. Find the domain. Now, this is a little tricky. Find the domain, and then let's talk about whether the domain is discrete or continuous. Okay. 
thinking about the domain, we always start the domain by talking about what's our first value. Let me start by saying now, because we should always question this, can I have negative input value? Can I have a negative time? No, you can have a bad time, but you can't have negative amounts of time. You cannot have negative time. So therefore, negatives are out. Could I have time zero? Yes. Whenever you're, and this is important to talk about, whenever you have an equation where you're talking about things changing over time, you have to have a time zero. You have to have a starting value. You have to have a time zero. So I know that I have time zero. Can I have time one? Yeah, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Is there any cap on it? Is there any ending point to this? No. So that means, that means that my domain is going to be any number greater than or equal to zero. Could I have 1.5 as my x value? No. Yes, this is what, hold on. This is why I kind of shifted the way it was worded. Because I said this is eating at a rate of 35,000 insects per day. So that means it's not like 24 hours pass and then 35,000 insects go in the belly. No, this is happening gradually over the course of the day, right? Mm -hmm. So that means if it's happening gradually over the course of the day, I could take at any moment within the day and figure out how many insects that anteater is eating. So that is continuous. That is continuous. And it's continuous because I could evaluate it at any moment in the day, any second, any minute, whatever. I could take any split second in the day and tell whether tell how many insects it's been eaten. Okay, now let's graph it. Now, when it's continuous like that, what I need to do to graph it is to just pick some values. If I could pick any values, well, then I, I bet you it's totally your option of whatever you want to pick then. Okay, so let's pick our starting value. That's always important. Why is it? Well, what is my equation? If I eat 30, no, I get me. If this thing eats 35,000 insects per day, what's my equation? Y is equal to what? No, I'm talking about what's my equation. Oh. Equation. Yeah. 35,000 x. Yeah. 35,000 x. What are you telling me about it? That's what I'm saying. It's not a lot if you're an anteater and you're not like little ants. Gotta get out of here. Um. Okay. Zero. And now let's just pick some values. Let's do zero, one, two, three, four. All right, so if I pick 0, 0, comma, 0. 35,000 times 0 is 0. 35,000 times 1 is 35,000. 35,000 times 2 is 70,000. 35,000 times 3 is 105,000. I'm just adding 35. But I, I don't even know. And then 105 plus 35 is 140. Yeah, but I kind of teach this thing. He also does it every day, multiple times a day. So he kind of All right, so let's take a look here. Let's take a look and see what our intervals need to be. Well, if I'm going up 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, let's go by threes. And let's say, okay, here's day one, here's day two. Here's day three, here's day four. And again, I should label my axes. That's the amount of days or time. Yes, that's plural of axis. Axes. Now, what's along my y axis? What's the label on my y axis? Insects. Mm 
Okay, now I need to go from zero all the way up to 140,000. So maybe, what scale did I use on my sheet here? I used, I, each box is 10,000. Each box is 10,000. So we're going to go zero, and then we'll go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000. 10, 20, oh, sorry, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100,000. And then uh, 10, 20, 30, 40. Up here would be 150,000. Because I'm not even going to need to go up that high, 150. I'm going to need to go to 140. So now we plot our point. We say, okay, one or zero comma zero, one comma 70, 70, two comma, uh, I'm sorry, that was one comma 35. 10, 20, 35, 2, comma, 70, 3, comma, 105, so just above 100,000, and then 4, comma, 140, right up at the top there. Okay, now, do I connect my dots? Yeah. Yes, it's continuous. Whenever you call something continuous, you have to graph your full and whole line. Because could I, if I really wanted to, could I have picked a time value of 1.5 in there? Yes. Yeah, we just picked, we picked X values that were convenient to us. I could have picked anything I wanted. If I really wanted to, I could have picked 2.456. I don't know why I would have, but I, I could have. So therefore, I need to graph my full and whole line. And sorry, I should. Okay, I can do better. Okay, sure. And you must put an arrow on the end. I don't want to get too picky about that, but you should be putting arrows on the end of your line. Every time you graph a line, you should be putting arrows on the end of your line. If you, if it's continuous. Uh, do we put an arrow for uh, the origin? Good question. Do we put an arrow down below? Well, if you put an arrow like this, you're telling me that I can go into the negative. Uh, can I go into the negative? No. No. Whoa. Victor. Throwing at me. You know what? I think it says insects because the ant eater can't actually eat ants. Like a but yeah. ant, it's, but it's not actually an ant. Wait, is it ant or ant like insect or is the family ant? I, you know what's funny? I worry my ant. You know what's funny? Now, um, so my daughter who's five, her grandpa came over one time and we saw a group of ants, and um, he said he saw a really big one and he joked and he said, oh, that's probably an uncle, you know. Mm -hmm. And now my daughter believes that the big ones are uncles. Like you call the big ones uncles. I have a video of the Yes, sir. Yes. All right. Next one up. Example 3A. The linear function y is equal to 145 plus 30x represents the cost y in dollars of an airline ticket after adding x check that. At most, five bags can be checked. Okay, interpret the terms and the coefficients. This is an extremely important question because it's one that comes up on the OST a lot. We've been talking about this. We've been talking about knowing what the pieces of the function actually mean. So let's do that. The equation is y is equal to 145 plus 30x. So what I would like to do is say, okay, what does 145 mean? What does 30 mean? What does x mean? What does the whole 30x mean? And then what does y mean? We're going to write this all out. We're going to, we're going to talk about each piece of this. Because I have seen example questions that ask you about all different pieces and parts of the graph, or excuse me, of the equation. And it'll say, okay, what is this thing? What is this thing? If I increase this, what happens to that? So it's important to know, to dissect the, an, an equation to see what it means. What does the one, 
145 actually mean? What does the 145 mean within the context of the problem? The starting cost. Okay, I like that. Let's go a little bit further into that. The starting cost. For the airline ticket, good. Just the ticket. How many check bags? Zero. Zero. And that's what we have to make note of. It's the airline ticket with no bags. Okay, what does the 30 mean? How much money per one bag? Good. $30. Per bag. What does X mean? I mean, that tells us in the problem. The number of bags. Okay, what does it mean when I put 30 and X together? Good. Total cost for bags. And then what is Y? What is my full output value? Total cost. Total cost. Good. Questions about that? All right, now let's find the domain and range. Or sorry, just the domain. Let's find the domain of this function. Okay, again, we have to ask ourselves, does it make sense if I put a negative input value? No. no. You can't have a negative amount of bags. Could I have zero bags? Yeah. Yes. You can fly without bags, you can just carry it on. So I can have zero. Can I have one bag? Yeah. Can I have 1.5 bags? No. no. Okay, so that must mean that I'm going to be listing these out. And how many total bags is it possible to have? Five. Five. No more than that, though. Five bags all together. Is that discrete or continuous? Discrete. Discrete, discrete right. Single solitary values means that it's discrete. Okay, so now... We graph the function. I think I have to make this a little bit smaller up here. There we go. Much better. Okay, graph the function using its domain. Now, the nice thing about a discrete function is it tells you the x value. It tells you the exact x values to use. So if my y is equal to 145 plus 30x, I'm going to say, okay, I've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Need to figure out all those values. Okay, if I have zero check bags, how much am I paying? $145. If I've got one check bag, well, 145 plus 30 is 175. Two check bags. Three checks bags. 235. 235. I'm just adding 30 each time. Because that's linear, right? We saw that within our table. Adding 30 each time to our y values makes it linear. So that means I've got 265 and then 295. Okay. What's the label on my x axis? Danielle? Number of bags. What's my label on my y-axis, Danielle? Total cost. And I'm glad we write total cost. We identified what the dependent variable was, what the y-value equals. That's what needs to go there. Okay, so we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's go by twos. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, we need to go from 0 to 295. People, 
You cannot start at like 100. Okay, you can't just make this 100. You have to start at zero on the y-axis. This has to be zero, zero. Okay, you can't start at some random value. Okay. Actually, I'll have to show you. I wonder if I can pull it up at the end of class. Um, I, I thought I was I was looking at something on uh, on social media, and there was a graph that somebody had retweeted. And the graph didn't start at zero, zero, so it made it look like there had been some drastic change in something. But there hadn't really, because the graph was completely distorted, because you hadn't started at zero, zero. I'll bring it up here at the end. Um, okay, so we got zero comma 145 all the way up to 300. Um, I think in my key, I did, so by 50, um, I went by 25. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so I did 25. Uh, so here's 50. I'm going two boxes now. 100, 150, 200, 250, 300. Every two boxes is 50, so each box is 25. And now we say, okay, 0, 145. 1 comma 175, 2 comma 205, 3 comma 235, 4 comma 265. Oh, this side that should be below that stuff. And then 5 comma 295. Should I be connecting my line? No. No, because this is discrete, not continuous. Do you see a linear trend? Yeah. Yes. That's different. People always say, oh, I see it. it looks like a line. I should make it a line. No, that's not the case. If you draw a line, that means you could have decimal values, and that we have seen that that's not that's not true. Questions about that one? That means I got an email. No, the computer sent a fake email just to ask a question. Maybe it's an email from the computer. Thanks. What do you teach today? All right, let's get to the last question here. So linear function m equals 10 minus 1.44p represents the amount of m in dollars that you have remaining after printing p photographs. Interpret the terms and coefficients. All right. So let's do that again, where we have our equation y is equal to 10 minus 1.44p. And we're going to say, OK, what is the 10? What is the 1.44? What is the p? What's it mean when we put it together? And then what's the uh, the y value? Oh, sorry, it's an m. Excuse me. And then what's the m value? Okay, what's the 10 mean? What does the 10 mean? And again, what is this equation representing? This equation is representing the amount remaining after I purchased photos. How much money do you have before uh, purchasing any photos? Good. Okay. Um, initial amount of money. Starting money. Money in your pocket. Okay, 1.44. What does that mean? Cost per photo. Cost per photo. $1.44 per photo for each photo. What is the P representing? The amount of photos. What 
what is the what do I get when I put it together? What is the 1.44 times C? Danielle? The total cost of just the photos, right? Total cost of the photos. And then what is my M? Is my, um, that would be correct if I was adding. I'm taking away, right? Good, very good. The amount of money I have left. Money left over. Good. It's very important that we do that. That can be difficult depending upon the complexity of the equation. All right, let's keep it going then. Let's find the domain. Oops. Let's find the domain and, and uh, tell whether it's discrete or continuous. Okay, so for my domain here, could I have negative amounts of photos? No. You can take a bad photo, but you can't have negative amounts of photos. I mean, you can name the photo negative. <laughs> um, so, but can we have zero photos? Yeah. Yeah, I guess we could print out no photos. How much money would be left over if I don't have any photos? No. Ten bucks. Okay, so I guess I can have zero. Can I have one? Yeah. Can I have one point five? No. No, you can't have one point five. So zero, one, two, three, four. Now, this is tricky. Come on in. Mr. Spallison, we're at the point where Hi. we find we're finding the domain, but we're this is the number of photos question. Oh, right. We're finding the domain, and we say zero, one, two. Could I go up with, to infinity? Yeah. Could I say a million photos? Yeah. But I would run out of money. So where's my breaking point? How how do I know when I'm going to run out of money? <laughs> What's that, Henry? Quiet, folks. Henry, not hit it on the head here. When the when the amount of money hits zero, right? Okay, that's like saying one point four four or sorry, ten minus one point four four. P. I don't understand why. Why is your domain zero one two three four and not an inequality? Can somebody explain that to him? Do you? Have I mean, from theoretically, <laughs> no, you can't have theoretically. Photo. I mean, it's a perfect break rule. Like, and then, what if I, I, would, and then, what if I, what if I didn't have, have somebody paper. in the photo, so I cut that half person out? Well, you already printed it, so you paid. Yeah, you paid for it already. No, you get a refund. I would argue. You I would say, that. That. Okay, so <laughs> what? Quiet, folks. Quiet. Quiet. Simmer. 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 Um, what I really want to do is find when this is going to happen. When it's going to equal zero. Okay? So, I subtract the 10 over to the other side. I divide by negative 1.44. So, P is going to be equal to... Negative 10 divided by negative 1.44, which is 6.94. So, can I have 6.94 photos? No, but I can have 6, and that's the most I could possibly have. Uh, what happens when I order 7 photos? I go over $10, no, which, I, which I cannot have. So I say zero, one, two, three, four, five, or six, and end it. Gio? Um, because the domain is gonna be like one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Every single time. That's what it like seems that it is. No, because if it's continuous, it's gonna be that inequality. It'll just go on like forever. Like, right. It'll it'll go on forever. Like the anteater problem where I said x is greater than or equal to zero, because time goes on. Nice. Um, be careful with that. 
I, I like what you're thinking, but be careful with that because if you say zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, put dot, 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 that implies that you only want whole numbers in that dot, 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 right? That means that that pattern will continue. So if I don't, if I wanted all numbers greater than zero, I'd have to use the inequality, not the dot, dot, dot. Okay. All right, now let's graph it. Let's graph it. So I'm going to make my table of values. We are at y is equal to, or sorry, m is equal to 1, or sorry, 10 minus 1.44p. And we're going to plug in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Got to line it up for myself. Or I'm going to get unorganized. Okay, if I order zero photos, how much money I got left? Ten bucks. Okay, so now we have 10 minus 1.44, which is 8.56. And I'm going to be a little cheater here, and because I ran these numbers ahead of time. 2 is 7.12. 3 is 5.68. 4 is 4.24, 5 is 2.8, 6 is 1.36. And when I hit 7, it goes into the negative. Wait, what's number 7.12. Yeah. Until it goes out negative. That would work as well. Yeah. Okay, now, what's on my x-axis? What's the label on my x-axis? Photos. Let me scroll down a little bit. Photos. What's the label on my y-axis? Not total cost. Money left over. Yeah, money left over. All right, so we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Can I go by twos? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yes, I can. All right, and now, see, I'll, put, I'll even put 7 out here, even though it's not going to hit that. Um, and now we go from 0 to 10. Okay, let's just use just 1 equals a box. Uh, I'll just label 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, zero comma ten. One comma eight point five six. Six, seven, eight and a half. Two comma seven point one two. Three comma five point six eight. Four comma four point two four. 5 comma 2.8, 6 comma 1.36, and it's going to hit seven. It's going to hit the x-axis before seven. What was it at? Like 6.94, something like that. Now, do I connect my dots? No. No, this is discrete. So I do not connect my dots because this is discrete. If it was continuous, then I would be connecting my dots. What about taxes? What's that? Taxes. What about taxes? Mm -hmm. Maybe the 1.44 has the taxes all over the place. Oh, okay. Right. All right. Um, I know some people picked this up yesterday. Raise your hand if you need a copy. Anybody here? Yeah, I know. Um, 